Well, when the Civil Rights Movement began, I was at Duke University, which my mother wanted me to go to because it was a prestigious school, safely segregated in the South. It wasn't like that little church school in Ohio that I wanted to go to. My God, I could be integrated and all that. So I finally gave up and went to Duke. They admitted me. And Durham, North Carolina was the second city to have sit-ins after Greensboro. And I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to it. I was too busy cracking the books. But I went to the Presbyterian youth meetings every Sunday evening, and the chaplain told us that next week, and this was probably March or maybe even April, that next week some students from North Carolina College who were involved in the sit-ins would be over to speak to us about it. And oh, they were finely dressed, particularly the gentlemen, and um, they explained legally and morally about the sit-ins. I mean, there's two approaches to it. And then, to everyone's surprise, they invited us to join them in the demonstrations. They were having picket lines every, you know, regularly in front of the variety stores. And my roommate was from New York, and she agreed, she wanted to go join, and I did. This was my chance, I'd been waiting for it. And I would probably, half a dozen, or 10 students, mostly I think graduate school guys, went down and joined demonstrations and that picketing led to the sit-ins and a couple of arrests and the school administration went ballistic. I got called to the dean's office. We went over there, dark building, one light on, knocked on her door, she let us in, locked the door, dropped the keys in her pocket and told us to have a seat. And oh, horrified. And had we called our parents yet? Well, no, we hadn't called our parents. We had called her because that's what she'd ask us to do. And um, there's the phone. It jingles the keys. So we called our parents. And she tried to get us to promise that we would never do this again. Well, we wouldn't promise. Finally let us loose. And some of the guys that had campus jobs lost them. They made the press eventually, I think. They mostly got reinstated, but there was a lot of pressure on us. And, I mean, I just didn't need this nonsense. Didn't want to go to Duke to begin with, so I dropped out at the end. Of, finished the semester, got my credits, and then I dropped out and went back up to Washington, D.C. And I felt that if s school integration is real, it cannot be two or three black students going through hell at a time. It has to be a two-way street. So I will apply to some, well, we didn't call them HBCUs then, but I'll apply to some colored schools. And if I get admitted, I'll go. I was ready to go back to school, and I wanted to get my college degree. And if I don't get admitted, at least I've reached out. Well, some of the SNCC guys, probably Chuck McDo, though he's not sure, said, well, if you're going to do it, you may as well apply to schools in Mississippi because they ain't done nothing down there yet. Well, he, he probably said ain't. And um, you can help them get going. Well, they got going before I got there, but I was accepted at Tougaloo. It was the only school accredited school in Mississippi that blacks could attend. Um, my high school refused to send my transcripts. I'm still working on that. Uh, Tougaloo contacted me that we haven't received your transcripts from your high school. We got them from Duke. So I called the high school. Well, they just, the counselor just would not send them. But Tougaloo said they'd admit me on my Duke transcripts. That was good enough. So I was admitted before the Freedom Rides happened, and I say the Freedom Rides got me to Mississippi free of charge, and the state of Mississippi gave me free room and board for the summer. Not bad. A lot of times you might hear that I, or see that I, you know, like applied or read all that at Tougaloo, 
after the Freedom Riots, decided on the Freedom Riots to go to Tugela. No, I had already been admitted. I went as a student. You know, you had to get your grades. So I kept my grades up. Pretty well accepted amongst the students after the first semester, as one lady here in Jackson says, well, I wasn't sure about you until I saw that every night you were studying just as much as we were in the library, and then I figured you were really okay. You didn't have an unfair advantage going to white schools and Duke. You had to study, too. Mm -hmm. And um, I think some students were sort of like, okay, is she here for real or is she here for a semester to check us out? And after I came back the second year to Tougaloo, I was in and actually invited to join Delta Sigma Theta sorority. I was happy to join because I was identified in so many ways with the movement. I was active in the campus movement. The sorority gave me an identity, a basis on campus other than the movement. The sorority I joined was Delta Sigma Theta, the pyramids. 